Head down though, please. Do they smell good? I'm getting the stink eye. Okay, you. You're gonna run away with this thing. Listen. It went right up my nose. It's so dusty. It is the most asked question. It's basically an in vessel composter. Morning guys, it's Saturday and uh, I don't want to work today. I really, really don't. But I have to get these boys ready for the big dance. So I'm going to do some hoof trimming on my own without Carissa today. Uh, hopefully they will cooperate. Billy's looking cooperative and lucky, maybe. Yeah, we're gonna do some hoof trimming and just some evaluations, just make sure they're okay for breeding. I know Edward was, he's been really favoring that front foot again. I really just wanna run them through so I can have a good look at him and maybe treat him if I have to. So we'll work on him and work on the rest of them. Whether I'll get them all done today or I may do the new boys tomorrow, maybe split it up over Saturday and Sunday. We'll see how good I feel. I don't wanna push it too much because my back is just feeling better today. It's been a two week kinda uh, hard go. This is typical Sandy. She gets feeling better and then she does too much. I have to do it today because after them I actually have to hoof trim the group that we just sheared with Charlie. They they need to be done ASAP because they also need their vaccines. I've got my assistant. Let's see if she can move these boys. You ready? Assistant? That went pretty good. So let's see if we can get them this far. For anyone new to the channel, uh, these boys are done. We're on kind of a three month system now, kind of right before we breed or in and around there. It keeps it a little easier for me to do every time if you can keep them kind of trimmed up. They do grow fast on a pack versus if they were on concrete or if they were on uh, pasture, they just don't seem to get as soft and grow quite as much as mine do. So I've learned over the years that they need done more often, so. Um, the other thing is we use the Infaco battery operated shears and these these are the reason I am doing this more often to be perfectly honest I've tried all the other manual shears and I finally got off my wallet and bought a good set and I've done thousands of hooves with these I've never yet changed these blades I don't know if I should be but so far knock on wood they are working fabulously so all I'm gonna do is uh, take off the very tip of the nail and then anything that kind of curls around we just trim those up and then it just makes a nice flat surface so that's what you'll witness here the little dorset got in here first you guys are just gonna be shy up there head down though please Eight heads in and this squeeze shoot is a vino it is old we probably should get a new one soon I don't know if they make them still All right, so you can see already in three months, there's quite a bit of growth already. So we're just gonna trim that down. If he doesn't pick me. I suppose it's good. Please don't pick, please don't pick.
when the hooves curl around like that, it leaves a perfect little spot for manure to build up. A little Tootsie Roll, which isn't good. I did not get you tight enough, buddy. Sit. If you can feel tension on their legs, let them go, or you'll get a pinch. You'll get kicked. You get a pinched finger. So I usually, if they start to wiggle and have tension on this leg, I just let it go. You shouldn't have any tension. Good. Two done. One more. Are you next, Billy? Yeah, just a sec. You can't open the door. Why is it you have all your wool, but none of the other boys have their wool? Hmm. Okay, the man of the hour. Billy really needs his dancing shoes. He might be a better demonstrator than the other one. Okay, I'm gonna get you all studded up. You're getting pretty big for your britches, Billy. Okay, buddy. That's nice. You smelling? Do they smell good? Hello, are you gonna help me? You my assistant? Beauty. Front feet. That's a lot of hooves for three months. They grow super fast. Beauty. Good boy. All right. Kinsey. Good boy. You mad? <laughs> You're not happy. I'm getting the stink eye. Okay, you. Are you going to do your own? You're going to run away with this thing. Listen, settle down. You're going to be big. Whoa.
Okay, we uh, finished the rams, the, the main pen. I'm gonna do the six new boys. Where are they? <laughs> On the side. Uh, bad news, Edward does have foot rot. Um, it was nasty, actually. So I cleaned it all out, flushed it out. Uh, I gave him a shot of penicillin and Medicam for pain. And I also put like, uh, so I washed it with soap and water and then I actually put iodine on it just to like really get it good. There's alcohol in it. I want it kind of to dry up. Uh, and then I wrapped it with uh, gauze and the vet wrap. And we are gonna be running them through here again in a couple days for the breeding groups. So I'm gonna take it off. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go to town. I might text my vet first. Go to town. We used to always for foot rot use like a copper base, like copper tox. That's what it used to be called when I was little. Um, it's nasty, it stinks, gets all over your hands, turns everything green, I think. But I wanna nip this in the bud. He's been he's been limping for a little bit, I noticed, but not really limpy, he just kind of walks weird. Um, but yeah, he's way at the back, sniffing the ladies. So it's like not slowing him down, uh, but he's all wrapped up with a little red, a little red bandage. So I'm gonna move these guys over and bring the, the new boys in. It shouldn't take long because they're little. These ladies must be in season because my beloved Red just jumped the gate. So she's in another pen now. Literally like a horse and a hurdle. Last animal and he kicked my thumb. I was holding the shears, holding them, not using them, just holding them. And he kicked my thumb into the shears. That's it for the Saturday. I'm done. Morning guys. It is Sunday. I do believe monsoon number two is hours away. So instead of having a nice relaxing day on the couch, we are going to spend it getting some stuff, some stuff that needs to get done here before the rain and honestly the snow that they're calling for on Thursday. We have had that stockpile of manure here across the road for, for most of the year. Should not drive and do this. Uh, they're here spreading it right now across the road and then they're gonna finish cleaning out the manure storage for our in-laws, the poultry manure they have down there. And that should get us through until wheat harvest next year. So the reason we couldn't finish uh, in in late summer when we usually do it after the wheat comes off is because we didn't get all the wheat planted last year so that's why they've had to come back to finish this year because we just didn't have anywhere to put the manure the perfect week was last week when we were doing soybeans but the soybeans weren't off this field yet so we have had a little rain uh, they waited till today so hopefully it's fit enough it looks okay um, but what mark's doing right now is we're heading down the road to pick up his uh, strip till unit he would like to strip till this field and the other field like we talked about during soybean harvest he said it's looking kind of he's like if it's too mucky though he said he might just use the joker get that manure incorporated into the ground here so yeah these guys are they got quite a rig they've got a payloader they've got a few fence and they've got these tebby manure spreaders that uh, they actually bought our old one um, but they already had a fleet of them so i'm not sure how many guys are here today i'm sure they're going like crazy because our forecast has just gone into the trash.
was silly. I left my window open. P.U. Well over half done that field, and it's uh, 10 to 10. So hopefully they'll get these two farms done, and then they'll move down the road. Uh, we're also spreading. We spread. We typically don't spread our sheep manure onto the fields where we're going to take sheep feed out of. Uh, so what we're going to do is the uh, the chicken manure we're going to actually spread on our hay field still today. So uh, that's what we try to do. We always try to reserve a little bit of the chicken manure for the hay field. That's how we do it anyway, just keep the species manure different. <laughs> I don't know if it makes a difference or not because I'm sure a lot, all the sheep farmers have to spread their sheep manure somewhere. So uh, it's just typically what we do. last spreader load and it went right up my nose it's so dusty that must be the pullet manure probably because i think it's the last bar that was cleaned out oh. goodness gracious oh i need to do a big old farmer blow yeah oh it's right in my sinuses we are using the joker the little speed disc whatever you want to call it, to uh, incorporate the manure. We were going to use the strip till, and then that'd be it, yeah. till the spring, but you were thinking it was a bit too moist. It's pretty moist. thick. It's pretty thick, it's going on. So, oh, the manure's a bit thick. Yeah, like I'm putting it on at seven and a half ton because it's not real high in nutrients. Uh, so it's kind of like, we want to put it on a little thicker because of that. It's not going to be awesome to strip till, and then I think we really need to mix it in with this rain and the forecast. So I guess just trying to do our due diligence from an environmental standpoint. This is probably the best yeah, way. yeah. We could have a lot of surface water this week. All right, we're turning around already. We're losing our leaves. I know. Well, it's a little mucky back here. Oh uh, yeah, it's a deeper. Kind of change. I am back in the barn <laughs> where I belong I guess so the boys are done so that's off the list but uh, I do have to do all the ewes that we just sheared with Charlie here on uh, Thursday these are the ewes that are due November 29th is when it starts they are due for a hoof trimming they were done uh, either right before I bred them or right after I can't remember with this group so uh, when we were shearing them, I noticed that the hooves looked really good. So we should, I should be able to get quite a few blasted through today. And I usually vaccinate at the same time as I'm hoof trimming, but I think I'm going to wait until I have Carissa with me. Um, I think I'm just going to hoof trim today and tomorrow, get all these guys done. And then between the two of us, we can, we can get the vaccinating done in one session all on its own. And I think it'll go a little quicker. Hi, Bailey.
Freckles said she wanted to be recorded, so I'm just granting her wish. <sighs> Jokes, ACP. You are a good sport, though. Come on. while I was out here this afternoon, I would take a few minutes while it was quiet and I'm not stressed out and I'm not rushing to go over my breeding groups, who I want bred to who. And if you remember in my last breeding group, I decided to change my system a little bit and start grouping my rams together in, um, I have I have the new young Rito group that I keep together, there's six of those rams. I have the big Rito group, which are, they're older, so they've bred a lot of the younger stock already. Uh, so they only go with a certain, they only go with the ewes that they've already been with. And then group three is all my terminal sires. So my Dorsets, Tunis, Suffolk, and the Steel Rams. So uh, it just keeps everything. Once I enter those groups onto the onto each one of those females, it stays on that U. So it's it's awesome. So every time I breed that U again, I know I can put them with group one rams, group two rams, or group three rams, which is great. So when I go to do this Wednesday, there's gonna be a bit of piggy piggybacking because I wanna use my Gallagher and I wanna use the flock watch. I don't have her here. Anyway, so on the flock watch, I'm gonna scan each tag of every U and I'm gonna see if there is a, if there is a spot there that I can designate what group I'm breeding her to. So then when it comes time for her to lamb, I can scan her tag and it will say somewhere what group the lamb was sired out of. And then I'll kind of know if at least it's Rito because the only ones I really care about who they're sired by for the most part are the ones that I'm keeping back. I want to know what breed the ones I'm keeping back are. And typically the only ones I keep back are Rito sired. So uh, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm not a purebred flock, so I don't, as long as they're not related, I really don't, I really don't care who the dads are, especially like individual, like Lucky, I know you bred this one, even though I do know who Lucky bred for the most part, because he's quite distinguishable in his young. Um, same with the Tunis. I can kind of figure out who the Tunis lambs are, because they're very distinguishable, as long as they've taken on dad's traits. If they've taken on mum's traits, then it's kind of a crapshoot. I have no idea who the dad is, and I usually don't put in an educated guess that way. I'll only do it if if they've really taken on that coloring of the Suffolk or the Tunis. The quicker I can get on to the flock watch, the better, and then I won't need this computer for my Gallagher anymore. So I am, I have been trying to get data over there as much as I can, but we've been busy and the guys have been awesome. They've been emailing me and I haven't been able to get back to them. So the mission, the goal for this week is to get this group kind of through and then I can write a list of all the things, all the questions I have for, for the boys at uh, flock watch and hopefully they can navigate me through some of this stuff. I'm really not sure why she comes out here. Ready to help me?
I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get all 60 of those used done today. Uh, the first 10 were really big and really heavy. And uh, oh, I'm, uh, I'm feeling my age, I'm not gonna lie. Three days of doing this straight. I kind of paced myself uh, Saturday and Sunday because I knew I was gonna have a big day today. But uh, they are all done. So that group is completely finished. We'll run them through one more time tomorrow. We're going to scan all their tags on both systems. And uh, I'll, ta I'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. And we will vaccinate them. That will be it for that group until lambing time. They're going to move around a little bit. Probably by Wednesday after we get the breeding group sorted out. But for now they're right back where they were. And uh, walking on a new set of shoes, which is great. There's one other thing I keep forgetting to show you guys. It is the most asked question uh, in my comments, in my DMs, and that is what happens to the lambs when they die or they don't live or they're stillborn? Our provincial government actually did do a grant for uh, dead stock, basically. I'm so grateful that we were approved for it. I hate needing one. Let's go and look at this. We uh, we got a we got a new composter. So this is the beast. It is a biovader. My brother-in-law sells these. It's basically an in-vessel composter. And uh, like I said, I hate the fact that we need one. This is overkill. We would never, bad, bad choice of words. Uh, we would never need one this big for how many I have not make it in a year. But uh, I'm not sure what sizes this thing came in or this is just one that was available so my brother-in-law sells these so he hooked me up with this I still need a really good full tutorial from him and then I might share it with you guys later once I kind of know we just we haven't had anything really to put in it he had a little bit left over he was getting it going for us and he had some compost in it already so basically it stays in here uh, you can set you can set a basically a timer on how much it's rotating it's a vessel and it just goes around and around uh, so you can make that as fast or as slow as you want it. ours is on very very slow i think there's heat involved uh, so you need a carbon source i think we're using manure and some straw my brother-in-law has a bunch of wood chips already in here so uh, when it comes down to the other end it is uh it is compost it is dry and now it's been raining on all afternoon but I'll show you kind of what it looks like when it comes out just compost these straps just come off and you can either use one door if you just have little lambs two doors if you have a bigger U or a ram for sure uh, so it's it's a big opening like this is oh man that would be probably about six feet I would think of opening probably three and three so yeah, pretty handy dandy. There's a thermometer as to what it's supposed to be at. Uh, but like I said, right now it's not heated up. We haven't really got it going full bore. So um, yeah, so this is our new little, the new addition to our flock, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. 